<laughs> okay, today we're going to be doing some Botox, and we're going to show our um, viewers how we like to mark the face prior to doing Botox. Each patient is different. Everybody's musculature is different, and when people express themselves, you'll find that the distribution of creases is always different in every patient. So without marking a patient, you're just kind of taking a gamble as to where the Botox goes. So we find it really important to mark each patient prior to doing Botox. So I'm going to have you frown like you're really angry. And for, first we mark the corrugator and procerus muscles. These are the muscles that pull down on the brow. We want to relax those muscles a little bit. I'm going to have you look way up over your head for me. And then we want to mark a little higher up on the forehead as well. We never want to get too close to the brow. If you're within a centimeter of the mid brow, you can actually cause eyelid drooping. So we're trying to avoid that by marking our patients ahead of time. And look way up again for me. Another thing that people often forget to do is to treat the lateral eyebrow. And when you forget to treat the lateral eyebrow to inhibit that muscle from working, you end up with something called Spock brow. And that's where the brow lifts way up laterally. We don't want that. We want Amy to have a really nice little feminine arch. And to do that, we have to inhibit muscles both medially and laterally. Botox takes about three to seven days to kick in. So we're not gonna see her results right away, but we'll notice over the next week that she has a really nice relaxation of the forehead. And then squint for us. So we like to mark the crow's feet as well. Again, everyone has a slightly different distribution of muscles here. Good, now I think she's ready to go. Okay. We'll start right, right here with this big forehead muscle in the middle. And again, we're just following our markings as we go. We're trying to distract the skin so she doesn't feel the needle going in. A little bit more here. Another thing we often do is we encourage our patients to try to use Arnica ahead of time. Some patients are on fish oil or vitamin E or aspirin or Motrin and all of those things make it easier for the patient to, to bleed and then bruise subsequent to the procedure. So the more often uh, we remind them to stay off those things prior to the procedure, the better the result. Again, we don't have to go real deep, just right into the muscle to inhibit the muscle. From when Botox contracting. is done right, patients still have expression, they just don't have the deep creases that they're used to seeing prior to the Botox. Mm -hmm. Again, we want to inhibit this little muscle out here, the lateral eyebrow area, to prevent her from having that Spock brow look. Prior to working on the crow's feet, we always change out our needle. We want it to be extra sharp um, to make sure that we don't have to uh, work too hard to get into the very thin muscles around the eyes. Thing on this side, we're gonna pinch her skin just a little bit. And that should give her a really nice little medial brow lift with a little feminine arch to her brow and some nice relaxation of her crow's feet. And by marking the patient ahead of time and using the distraction technique, I think we get superior results with our Botox.